So thus far we've covered three of the major storage engines supported by MySQL, including the default MyISAM, as well as CSV, and also memory-based storage engines. Let's open our notes and discuss an additional storage engine that may be of use depending on whether or not you find it useful, of course. This storage engine is called the Archive Storage Engine. So let's list it as Archive Storage Engine. And you should be able to tell by its name that it performs some sort of archival function for us. What's neat about the Archive Storage Engine is that indeed it does archive any data that's inserted into the table structure that's governed by the Archive Storage Engine or that is of type archive. And it stores the table in a compressed format that's compatible with gzip. MySQL uses zlib to provide archiving support and the first thing we should do is check to ensure that we do have support for the archive storage engine. So we'll log in to MySQL as the user root. Of course we'll prompt for password and once in we'll execute a show engines. This tells you the different engines that are supported by MySQL for, st for storing table data. So as you can see we have support for the archive storage engine. Let's just stretch this window a little bit more to make things fully justified if it'll even fit. We'll try it again. There it is. So we do have support for the archive storage engine and as a result we can create archive base storage engines or archive based tables based on this particular storage engine. What we'll do is test query speeds between archive and standard MyISAM type tables by creating a large data set of 10 million rows. So we'll go ahead in a separate window now and create that file using the sequence command, a command we've shown you earlier, a quick and easy way to generate a large number or even a small number of sequential numeric values. Let's SU in and we'll navigate into varlib MySQL into the HR directory since MySQL import attempts to import files from the database directory by default. We'll go ahead and execute a sequence and we will instruct sequence to create a file populated with a sequence of numbers from 1 all the way up to 10 million by simply specifying 10 million. And we'll send it into a file with a prefix of let's call it simply 10 underscore mil dot txt. So the name of the table will be named 10 underscore mil when we create it. Let's go ahead and execute this command. It will take a little bit to run on the server. And while it runs, we should note that the archive storage engine does not support indices. So does not support indices. And again, this is all subject to change, but this is currently the case. When you store data into an archive storage engine type table, ensure that it doesn't contain any indices, which includes fields that are considered to be auto-incrementing fields that are generally defined whenever you create a table with an auto-incremented column. So as a result, keep in mind that you cannot have indices within the archive storage engine based tables. So when we create our table, it will be without an auto-incremented column. Let's go ahead and write that syntax now. We'll simply execute a create table and we'll use the clause if not exists followed by the name of the, ta the table which is 10 underscore mil and it'll contain one column and we'll call this particular column simply ID but this is not an ID that's auto incremented. It will be an ID column which will store integers of type up to big int to support all of our values up to or to cover all 10 million of our values but big int will certainly support larger values and once created we'll need to specify that the engine type is equivalent to archive now again as we insert values into this particular table that's based on the archive storage engine MySQL under the hood is actually compressing the values that are to be inserted into the database which or into this particular table within the database which brings up another point and that is the fact that the archive base storage engine supports only a subset of the DML commands so note 
archive storage engine supports only in between single quotes select and insert DML statements important to know so that after you've inserted your data the only thing you'll be able to do is select data from the archive storage engine based table you won't be able to delete or update and as a result that's something that you may want to consider before committing to this particular type of storage engine but it is a useful storage engine if you do have a large set of data that you'd like to have represented in a table like format or in a structured format but of course occupying less disk storage so here's our syntax for creating the table we'll create this particular table within the HR database so we'll just prefix it with a use HR and then we'll follow it up by creating a similar table that will store another set of 10 million records after we've renamed the file. Let's go ahead and create it. The file has been created and within the database we'll execute our two commands and now let's execute a show tables you'll see that we now have this new table called 10 underscore mil of course a show create table for 10 underscore mil will reveal that it is based on the archive storage engine but it currently contains no data from a file system perspective let's look at the most recently created entries in the varlib mysql hr directory and you'll see that there's some new unfamiliar items with unfamiliar extensions frm is familiar this tells us that it's the form file for the table structure for 10 mil or 10 underscore mil so this file the dot frm file describes how the 10 underscore mil table is to be created However, notice that there are two additional files, one with a suffix of arz, the other with a suffix of arm. The suffix of arz represents the table data in a compressed format. So let's copy this in and just simply note it that this is equivalent to table data in archived slash compressed form and let's take a brief look at the other file we'll copy it the arm file or dot arm file is a metadata file this is equal to table meta data or data about the data the table metadata file describes the format that's supported by the mysql compressed rs file and other attributes such as compression strength and so forth so things that are specific to the compression algorithm that's used and by the way the compression software is freely attainable from zlib.net and is included with most Linux distributions so let's just re recap for a little bit we're using what's called the archive storage engine and it does not support indices if you attempt to define a table structure with indices it'll bomb let's go ahead and try to do that before we move on we'll create a new table will we'll alter the name slightly we'll call it let's say 10 mil 2 and let's define ID to be big int followed by auto underscore increment followed by primary key we'll make it the ID column and we don't need any other columns and you'll see that this will create an error that the used table type does not support auto incremented columns but to be more precise the archive storage engine does not support indices and by virtue of defining an auto incremented column we would have created an index on that particular column so having said that we still have the original table we've failed in creating 10 underscore mil 2 and we can work with this particular table now we'll want to use MySQL import to import values into it because as it stands a select count star from 10 underscore mil will reveal that there are no entries so let's go ahead and attempt to insert values from the shell using MySQL import and again the name of the text file or the prefix the base name of the text file should match the name of the table when using MySQL import we'll specify the P to prompt we don't need to specify a column so we'll just go ahead and mention the database name which is HR followed by the name of the text file which is 10 underscore mil dot txt this will prompt us for a password and the data is currently being inserted from a separate window let's go ahead and run that select count doesn't get updated till the up the full 
or in fact, let's include the from, but the full values won't be updated until it's fully inserted. We'll get counts along the way, but not the full counts. As you can see, we are up to 6,797,000. Let's rerun a count, and we should be somewhere near the end of the process. And we've made it to 10 million rows. So our new table has 10 million rows, just like that. Although the values are just integers, so it's not a big deal. So we've inserted all of the values. Notice that there are warnings. And if we LSLTR, which you can reveal using show warnings, by the way, or checking one of the log files. If we LSLTR, you'll notice that the ours file, or the compressed file that MySQL is using to represent the table data that we imported from the ASCII text file, has been compressed significantly. Let's compare and contrast. The original ASCII text file with no compression is represented on disk by 109 megabytes, whereas the compressed version is much, much smaller. It's 1.8 megabytes. So as a result, we've created a representation of the same 10 million records, but using a very tiny fraction of the original size. And again, as mentioned, select and inserts are supported against this particular type of table. Let's go ahead and select star from 10 underscore mil and we'll use instead of dumping everything to the screen which will take a while we'll use a where clause to indicate that we want a specific row let's go ahead and find where and we'll find the name of the column which is ID so where ID is equivalent to 750 now since by default MySQL will perform a full table scan we'll need to wait a little bit longer when retrieving data from compressed archive-based tables. So it takes a little longer to return values from these types of tables, but that should be expected because the tables are indeed compressed, and as a result, there is some overhead in compressing and decompressing, or in compress compressing or and also uncompressing the results when retrieving them. So retrieval as well as storage will be slower when using this particular type, but that goes without saying. Let's execute this query, and we'll see how long it took momentarily. You'll see it takes a good number of seconds, almost four seconds, which is considered to be a slow query, but not by our current definition, which takes about 10 seconds, or is defined as 10 seconds before a query is considered to be slow and logged as such. Let's go ahead and search for the row where the ID is equivalent to 10 times 750 or 7500. You'll see it takes roughly just under four seconds. Let's go 10 times in again to 750,000, or 75,000 this time. We'll just keep incrementing it by 10 or increasing it by an order of, an order of magnitude each step of the way. And you'll see it still takes roughly under 4 seconds, or under 3.75 seconds, to perform the table scan to find the interesting row. Let's take it up to 7.5 million. And this will perform a table scan very quickly and eventually come back with the results. But the bottom line is it's taking much, much longer to retrieve these values. Now, we could have loaded all 10 million records into memory, into a memory base table, and it would have returned much, much quicker than one that is compressed. And that is to be expected. We can compare and contrast the values here by creating a temporary database structure. So let's create a database. We'll call it HR2 and we'll delete it momentarily. And after we've created this database, we'll go ahead and create, we'll use it, HR2, and then create a similar column and a similar table. Let's paste and let's execute a show databases. And HR2 wasn't created let's uh, in fact we specified create databases plural so we'll take that off and try it again then we'll execute the create table and now it exists so let's show table but this type is of archive which is not what we wanted so we'll drop table or we could execute an alter table to change the engine that'll work as well but for now let's go ahead and just drop 10 underscore mil and we'll recreate it this time using the default storage engine and once it's created, we'll execute a show create table against 10 underscore mil. Again, this is from the HR2 database, just to compare and contrast the performance. So here it is with the default MyISAM storage. 
Let's go ahead and load the data into it using MySQL import as we just did, but this time we'll load it into the HR2 database and it'll prompt us of course and once we've authenticated let's try that again and it's throwing an error and in fact it's in a different database directory so let's move 10 underscore mil dot text one level up into HR2 and then we'll change one level up into HR2 and then try the MySQL import again let's execute it and this will now execute against the right database there it is so it's populating it so from this particular window select count against the 10 underscore mil table will reveal rather quickly and that we keep missing the from keyword here that it's made it to 10 million so when inserting data into a non-compressed table which again should go without saying it's much the operation performs much much quicker and ditto for retrieving data let's go ahead and execute a select star from hr.10 underscore mil where ID is equivalent to 800,000 and we'll time it of course my SQL will return the timer momentarily that it takes just under four seconds and then let's run a similar query against HR2 which is my ISAM base and of course it's going to execute much much quicker notice instead of 3.72 it's about to come up it took 2.87 so it runs quicker but as you can see the overhead when using compression isn't that great it's roughly a second difference and we could increase this performance by including or turning this particular column into an index. So for example, if we created the table and defined it as a primary key, let's just copy the syntax. Let's, we're going to redefine 10 mil in the HR2 database, but we'll, we'll make it big int. That's fine. And we'll also specify that it is to, to be a primary key, that is, which creates an index. So we'll set primary key the values are unique anyway to be ID then let's go ahead and attempt well we have archive at the end this should be my ISAM which is the default so it doesn't need to be specified and we'll execute a drop table 10 underscore mil and then recreate it with our new syntax within HR2 and then we'll need to reload the data of course from the file system so let's reload it it'll reload very quickly because the table structure is based on my ISAM which is considerably optimized over compressed based tables and it says there's a duplicate entry it found one duplicate entry let's see what it was able to insert let's execute a select count against 10 underscore mil and it placed 999 or 9,999,999 values. That's fine. It inserted it. Let's perform that query. Now that this particular table has an index on it. So we'll rerun the query and we'll find that select momentarily where we're looking for 800,000. And notice the big difference, significant difference. This is enough to want to implement indexes or indexes, however you want to pronounce it, on pretty much any column that you can within any DBMS structure. So by the virtue of defining an index, we've cut the query time from about two and a half seconds to less than a full second. In fact, less than really just a minute fraction of a sec second. And once we've defined that in index and rerun the query a couple times, it's virtually no seconds. And we could have increased the speed of this by defining the storage engine as a type memory. Of course, the values would only be stored in memory, but nonetheless, you get the picture. So really we wanted to show you that it is possible. MySQL is very, very versatile in that you're able to store your relational data sets using these various output types. Again, we did mention that the compressed file on the disk is of type that's or of a type that's compatible with gzip. We'll LSLTR and execute a file. We're in the wrong directory here. Let's go up to HR and execute a file against 10 underscore star, and you'll see that the 
ours file is the compress file and it's compatible with gzip because it uses a standard freely available library the zlib library so as a result MySQL is outputted to gzip it also can do csv it'll store the data in memory it'll dump it into a black hole if you want to use the black hole engine it'll use its default myisam and pretty much for any of the engines that you see when you execute show engines mysql can output to that format perhaps the most intriguing is the csv if you are a front-end power user then you can store it with a management tool which represents the structured layout such as mysql and know that your data is actually committed to the disk in csv but other types are pretty interesting as well including InnoDB, which supports transactions row level locking and so forth and as mysql grows the list of engines is likely to grow We've even shown you Federated, where you can link or per perform linked tables, which is another neat feature. So there just seems to be no end to the power of the MySQL storage engine capability. And we've covered some of the more common storage engines that you're likely to use for one reason or another.